Lee and I have watched more TV together in these last COVID months than we have in our entire marriage. And one of the shows that we, um, we enjoyed, sort of enjoyed, but got transfixed by was The Crown. I don't know if any, um, I'm sure some of you have seen The Crown. And of course the sets are incredible, the clothes, um, you know, we talk about how real could this have been or not. But one of the things that really stood out for me in that movie was that very clear definition between Elizabeth the person and the crown. And it shows up over and over and over throughout that series. No matter who was the king or the queen, um, we don't know, I, you know, they don't go into a lot of the history, but then as they look at who will be the king, Charles, there's constantly this rub between the role, the, um, the expectation, and the person. And we could go on, but I, I don't mean to, you know, presume to know Elizabeth the person or even Elizabeth the crown, and same for Charles. But I was really touched by that, that gulf in their life. When I was younger, I felt like I was one person when I was with my friends and a different person when I was with my parents. I feel like when I was younger, I, I, um, I don't know, I tried to keep those separate or I tried to, I didn't really know what my parents maybe um, exactly thought or didn't think. Um, and, I, you know, I, it, was, it was some education pieces that I did more when I was in my 30s maybe that helped me see that being myself everywhere is the authentic self. So not pretending to be something that I'm not um, for some people and be something else for other people. And when I became the pastor in the church, I remind myself of the same thing. And so maybe for some, it's kind of shockingly familiar at times. <laughs> uh, maybe I overshare a little bit, I, um, but I don't want to, I don't want to be inauthentic. I want to be the real me, so if you saw me out in public, you wouldn't think that I was something different. And when I am out in public, I want people to know that's just the same kind of pastor I am and to be really authentic. And certainly finding my voice and finding my voice online. I don't know, I don't know what you think. It's very weird because I just talk into my camera, but I'm really thinking about all, the, all of you out there, even though I don't know who you are. Um, I want you to know that if you met me in person, it would, it would be the real me. But, you know, we still struggle with that, don't we? And this psalm today made me think about that and think about that in terms of our lives these days. Because this sermon, or this psalm, was written by people um, presumably as a coronation prayer or, or a coronation song so that when a new king was crowned, they were setting the, the parameters for that person. It was the attributes of justice and mercy that they were bestowing upon that person. And they knew that the, the ruler would be judged by their actions and by the conditions left behind when the next ruler came into power. And what really sticks out for me is that goodness begets more goodness. The more we discover, we have an epiphany, pulling in the epiphany Sunday here, the um, pulling in of the gifts of people that are different from us and learning from each other helps us exchange that giftedness of others with ourselves and then out again with new people. We have an opportunity to learn from people that are different from us, 
who bestow goodness upon us, who are generous with us, who are kind to us. And we then see that in ourselves. It helps us recognize who we are so that we can then share that with more people. It's a gift, gift exchange, if you will, of belovedness and praise between the holy and creation. And that the more we live in the state of knowing and accepting that we are beloved, the more that we can share that belovedness with each other and those we don't know and those who look different than us and those who live differently than we do. If we're set on our grace-filled lives, if we feel firm in the fact that God truly loves us just the way we are, then that will help us love others just the way they are. Can we even imagine that all people have tender hearts and are yearning for this same same sustenance that we get from our faith. If you are new to your faith, if you are coming back from a period of being gone from your faith, maybe you're just checking out religion. You know, you're one of the, those people who see yourself as, as um, spiritual, but you wouldn't call yourself religious, or perhaps you've been hurt by religion, and by that I mean a bunch of people who are yearning to carry on God's story together and fail at it. If you are one of those people who are scared, lost, lonely, and who are wondering, is there a gift for me? Is that little baby for me? What does that story even mean? And were there gifts bestowed upon me upon my birth? The answer is yes. I know that because I have faith and I trust that that grace is meant for me on my best days. On my hardest days, you all hold that up for me. That's why we do faith together. That's why being spiritual on your own isn't quite enough. We need community around us. And while we don't have a king in our country particularly, we, um, we have a president that we expect to uphold kindness and goodness and the best for everybody, we also have to live into that ourselves. And we do that better when we do it together. This whole series is going to be around the fact, reminding us every week, that God is holding our lives. God holds our hearts. God holds our pain. God holds us when we're lost and when we're found. God holds us when we mess up and when we don't say the right thing or we say the wrong thing or we hurt somebody. And God helps us with the grace that's bestowed upon us to live that grace out in our lives with those around us. In this series, the sermon will be followed with a Selah moment. In the Psalms, there's a word that shows up sometimes at the end of a Psalm or throughout a Psalm, and it's the word Selah. No one knows exactly what that really means. Is it a type of Amen or so be it? Because these were songs, was that the place where a bell was rung? Or a note was played? Or was it simply silence? 
we invite you to settle into that moment before our prayers. As you settle into this new year, open to God's goodness and grace, to the gifts that God has given us. Selah.